And we're going to take our slide. This is our slide and our specimen there. And we are going to put it un under the lens uh, by just clamping it to the stage. There is a clamp here, uh, as you can see. And we're going to um, use the silver knobs right here to move it back and front, left and right, until it's kind of in right under that lens. Now, you won't be able to see anything from the lens just yet, okay? Uh, but we will focus on it later, right? We'll, we'll just make sure it's somewhat in the center. All right, now we can move on to focusing. Again, make sure that the stage is at the highest level. Then we're going to take this... Um, we're going to rotate this fine focus knob and we're going to just turn it very, very slowly. I emphasize on the word slowly. Very slowly, just turn it towards you until you can see some cell debris. Okay, so these are cells that you can see in a microscope. These are not yet your specimen. Our specimen, in this case, is dyed bread. Uh, we are looking at maram grass today, or amophila, and um, you're gonna just rot use this silver knobs here in order to find the specimen, right? We did put it in the center just now, but it might not be exactly center. So you're gonna move it up and down until you see something pink, because in this case, our specimen is dyed pink. Now, once we see the specimen, we can realize, we realize that it's not exactly focused. So we can go ahead and turn, rotate this um, fine focus knob a little bit more okay, towards you until it comes into focus. Now, you can see it slowly come out of focus. So you turn back a little bit until it becomes completely clear. So this is the specimen under 10 times magnification. After you focus on the specimen at 10 times, now we are ready to look at it at 40 times. Now make sure the part that you want to look at, okay, let's just look at the end of this thing, is in the middle of the slide. Then you rotate these lenses, switch it to 40 times, make sure it clicks, right? And you should see something like this. Usually it's not completely in focus, uh, but it's almost. So again, we're going to touch the fine focus knob and again, very slowly rotate it towards you or away from you until it focuses. Now, I emphasize very slowly because if you rotate too much, it's going to be completely out of focus and it's very hard to find the specimen again. So when this happens, if this happens to you, please go back to 10 times magnification Right, always focus at the lower magnification first and return the stage to its highest level and then slowly focus on the specimen again. And then switch it to 40 times and then very slowly turn the fine focus knob again until you see your specimen. And this is how you focus on a specimen using the microscope. Okay, so one more thing you need to learn is how to calibrate your eyepiece reticule using a stage micrometer. So a stage micrometer is a very small ruler that's on a slide. I don't know if you can see it here. Now, this stage micrometer, we're going to put it under the lens at the stage. That's why it's called a stage micrometer. You put it at the stage. Now, you can put it in in whatever orientation you want. Okay, clamp it on. And like just now, uh, move the, the lens to the lowest magnification, so 10 times first. Move the stage to its highest height, right? And then um, you can use the silver knobs to make sure it is in the center. Now, as you can see from lens, it's, com it's not completely focused yet. So you can touch, you can use the fine focus knob here, rotate it very slowly in order for it to come into focus. Now, if you're like me and you realize that your stage micrometer has been placed on in the wrong direction, feel free to take it off, flip it over, put it back on.
you might need to focus it a little bit again using the fine focus knob like I am doing and this is the stage micrometer in focus at 10 times magnification now what we're going to do is we are going to line up the IP squared reticule and the stage micrometer in this case the stage micrometer it's the one that's magnified you can see it's big, whereas the IP reticule is at the eyepiece and therefore is not magnified. This is the eyepiece here. And you can actually rotate this piece or even the entire arm in order to rotate that IP reticule. So we can rotate that. Whoops, can't see it now. Right, rotate that IP reticule so that they are both parallel to each other. And we can use these silver knobs in order to make sure that it lines up with the IP reticule quite well. Okay, so uh, once you get there, um, you might realize that you might realize that um, you cannot see. Sometimes you cannot see the IP reticule and stage micrometer at the same time. It means one might be blur and one might be focused. And what you can do is again use the fine focus knob and you're gonna just gently pull it out of focus and back into focus again right um, until you can figure out where the IP reticule and stage micrometer is and um, they are both ideally they are both in focus okay sometimes when they overlap it's kind of hard to see and kind of hard to read it so um, I like to put it on the outside a little bit like this okay make sure it's parallel and then read off read take a reading so in this case it seems like it seems like one division on a stage micrometer, which is 0 0.1 mm, equals to 11 EPG. Now, different microscopes will give you slightly different readings, and that is fine. Each microscope has some um, sort of error somewhere. Okay, so 0 0.1 mm in this case equals to 11 EPG, and we can use that in order to calculate um, the length that each IP reticule represents. Now, I know the IP reticule here is labeled 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, but when we talk about 1 EPG, we are really talking about the smallest division on the IP reticule. So that's very important. Now, once we have calibrated that, we are going to use, use the same magnification. Don't, don't defocus it. We're going to put our specimen under the stage. All right. And then we are going to find our specimen, uh, make sure our specimen is in the middle, somewhere in the middle of right under the lens. Make sure it's in focus. Okay, then we can use this eyepiece reticule in order to measure something. For example, maybe um, they want to measure the widest area of this leaf. So. I think the widest area should be around here. Okay. Maybe this this is kind of wide. Okay, we can rotate our IP reticule in order to measure it. Okay, I think the bottom one is a little bit wider. Okay, so we're taking the widest measurement of this leaf. As you can see, I was rotating the eyepiece reticule in order to, um, by you know, I was rotating the eyepiece reticule by turning this black piece right here at the eyepiece, and I was um, adjusting the location of specimen using the silver knobs right here. Okay, and from this specimen, um, and from this reading we can see that the maximum width is 53, oh, I'm sorry, 63 EPG. And from our calculations just now, we can accurately 
tell what is the actual length of this specimen at its widest area. Okay, so maybe I want to change the um, magnification of his microscopes. Maybe it's too small to see. Okay, maybe, just maybe. For example, I want to measure the uh, diameter of a certain cell. And it's way too small to see. Uh, and I want to change it to 40 times. Now, as we change the magnification to 40 times, we will realize that uh, the eyepiece graticule doesn't change in size, but the specimen has. And therefore, um, we need to recalibrate our eyepiece graticule if we do want to use 40 times.